Uh, I'm here today with Alexei Belovko, the R&D and Production Manager from Radius Security. Uh, we're going to ask Alexei a few questions today about his role and, and his thoughts around video analytics. Thanks for joining us, Alexei. Thank you very much, and hi, everyone. So, so first off, I guess the first question would be is tell me a little bit about uh, your role with Radius Security, your company, you know, what does Radius Security do and, and uh, you know, about your, your role in the industry. Thank you for your question. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, the dedicated team of, uh, at Radius Security, uh, a division of Vancouver Fire and Security has called Canada home for more than uh, six decades. And uh, uh, Lately, uh, we have created a brand called uh, Red Handed, Red Handed Security, where we use human detection, uh, video analytics, and blend of uh, special command center protocols, and uh, where we trying to catch uh, crimes in a progress. You know, uh, this is uh, our radius unique strategy for securing outdoor assets. We were trying not to scare uh, bad guys away, where we try to catch them. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, we first developed the security solution at uh, Marina in Suri back uh, a few, like lots of years ago when our CEO, uh, Rob Baxter, has, uh, uh, has his boat. And uh, he had a multiple uh, break-ins break to his boat and he wanted to protect it. Uh, even having like uh, fire protection and security service businesses, he had this trouble. And then he came up with the solution of utilizing video analytics where uh, he was able to catch bad guys. And today, from our command center uh, in Richmond, British Columbia, uh, we, catch or we, we watch over uh, car lots, construction sites, and uh, outdoor storage facilities uh, in British Columbia, Alberta, Ontario, uh, and other locations uh, across uh, Canada and the United States. And wow, speaking so you, have of, a, you, have, you have a very big reach. You, you, you reach out all the way through the, the western part of the U.S. and almost all of, the, all of uh, Canada then, right? Correct. Exactly. Yes. And also, and also some Texas sites as well. So in the United States and uh, speaking of my role, um, I direct the company research and development programs to meet organizational needs and to capitalize on potential uh, new products and services. Uh, also, I organize and oversee uh, the assembly and programming of the various security, uh, video surveillance, access controls uh, that we offer to our customers. Got it. So you really are the, the responsible for integrating all the different technology platforms that you use at Radius. Correct. Of course. And also, I, obviously, I work uh, in touch with our command center, uh, with the sales department as well, you know, to kind of uh, see what the market needs and blend it you know, into the processes and also make sure that uh, all the uh, team members understand how to utilize it, certain technologies when we're trying to uh, start using them. Makes sense. Makes sense. So you mentioned video analytics when you're introducing yourself. Tell me uh, a little bit more about your overall experience using video analytics. It sounds like you have kind of a long history with it. Uh, yeah, you got it right. Uh, <laughs> I actually I do. And it starts back in 2006 when I was an uh, undergraduate student at uh, radio physics and uh, computer technologies department, mostly uh, of the Belarusian State University. Uh, where I mostly was focusing on system analysis and computer simulation. And my final project degree was the detection of moving objects in CCTV systems. And uh, obviously, back in those days, uh, even, you know, for my project, I was utilizing just a basic pixel-based analytics, just, you know, subtracting background uh, right. uh, frames from the video stream. And that was, is it, that was it. However, uh, being introduced, uh, you know, neural networks and machine learning uh, terms, uh, they have been around in those times, but they're mostly were living in academic world because of the computational power, uh, processing power, storages, and uh, they still uh, were too expensive. And also time for the training, the models was taking, you know, forever. Uh, back in those days, however, I was introduced and I, was, I got interested in it like back in those days. Yeah, and then uh, since I started my career in, uh, uh, in this industry, in security industry, obviously, first we were, um, most of the players here, they were using either live monitoring or just a basic motion detection back in those days. And in many ways, many people are still using those basic technologies, aren't they? It's, it's companies like yours that have really kind of taken that step up to start using more advanced technologies and more advanced video analytics. So 
maybe, you know, tell me a little bit about how you've seen it change in the security industry generally and you're in, in the monitoring industry specifically. And then, you know, how has AI and machine learning really kind of changed the dynamic of how, how it works in, in, your, in your environment? Yeah, if we look if we look back in those technologies, especially uh, in the security industry, yeah, with everything has started from uh, motion detection, and uh, you're right. Uh, for some companies, it started and it still is there, uh, where they're utilizing motion detection. Then, I would say uh, security. Some some manufacturers they're they're also utilizing uh, some sort of advanced pixel-based analytics, where 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 there is a calibration and size of the object and speed of the object has been. Uh, taking into consideration to to raise a certain alert direction and such and such things. However, uh, those uh, type of algorithms they are uh, great in this, on a certain level, but they still produce lots of false alarms. Or if you want them to be uh, uh, more efficient, you need to invest much more human time to tweaking and adjusting those algorithms and that type of analytics to reduce the amount of the false alarms. However, okay. Uh, yes, with the machine learning, when machine learning ha has come into place, you know, it's been a long way for it because uh, not only for security industry, you know, since uh, hardware manufacturers were able to achieve uh, better processing times and also uh, giants like Google and Amazon came up with their cloud infrastructure where they were able to implement a great machine learning infrastructure and also the big data uh, warehouses where we can process big data simultaneously and fast, which has made uh, machine learning to succeed and uh, you know and go uh, beyond the academic world. So this is this is where in security industry, you know, we slowly started to implement this. You know, uh, pixel-based analytics on the edge, and then transferring the data to the cloud, and then heavy lifting all happening on the GPUs and in the cloud, and then. Uh, processing those uh, that data and raising those alerts. Uh, obviously, these days it's not something new, it's already there. It's just a matter of uh, using it right and as well as uh, finding the right, right provider of this technology. Makes sense, makes sense. So speaking of that, what, what do you look for in an analytics provider? What's your, you know, you, you obviously as, as head of R&D have a very, you know, strict set of criteria, I would imagine, in terms of technologies that qualify for, for use at Radius. And, you know, so what do you look for in your analytics providers? Uh, in, I would say uh, with all of the uh, development right now and open source uh, community and uh, all over the, uh, you know, giant hype around the uh, AI and the ML, uh, right now, technology-wise, there is uh, a few similar providers on the market with the technology, but mostly we look uh, like as a, as a company uh, all together. First important thing is to find uh, that the, if this technology can be integrated right into the existing environment that we have, because most right. of the command center and monitoring stations, they utilize an automation uh, software. It can be, you know, Emix, it can be Manitou, it can be uh, WebEye in Europe or Sentinel. And uh, as long as, so uh, in my role, I'm looking into technologies which are uh, good from technical point of view, and as well as they have to be integrated well into existing environment. And obviously, uh, as in any partner or any provider, we look for the company which can be, you know, uh, accountable, uh, supportive, and provide the right support for the uh, for us, as well as uh, you know, being honest in so many cases because the security industry. Like I always try to say to everyone, it's not a playground and we have almost don't have room for any mistake because we are dealing with people and companies assets and sometimes people lives. Makes sense. <clears throat> Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're not just responsible for catching the bad guy. I mean, it's, that's, that's what a lot of people think of the security industry, but we're responsible for employee health and safety. We're responsible for a lot of different things. And like you said, company assets, people's assets. So thanks for that. That's a very thoughtful reply. So, you know, maybe last question for you. Uh, what new opportunities do you see for video monitoring within the physical security market beyond what you're doing today? It sounds like you're very innovative in terms of the way you're using technology to, to, catch, to catch the bad guy and also to, to, you know, provide the highest value for your customers. What do you see next? What's the, you know, what do you think video monitoring can do for the security industry beyond what it's doing today? Considering that we are at the moment uh, are getting 
or we want to be, uh, to be at that point, uh, to reduce a huge amount of uh, false alarms, obviously that will, uh, uh, that, will free, that will free up some sort of manpower uh, at the command center where it can be used for uh, providing a better services uh, to our customers, you know, and also uh, being involved more into communication and uh, providing some, or maybe taking, uh, or maybe looking into the, you know, other business opportunities uh, in a monitoring uh, area, because, you know, there is tons of the uh, things that we can do out there and we are not taking them just because we're busy sometimes of on handling false alarms uh, in this time. And we all know how painful it is. But overall, uh, in the development of AI, uh, after just detecting humans and vehicles in a stream, I would say uh, looking into the amount of, uh, of different papers which are coming out uh, during the TVPR conference, it's a computer vision and pattern recognition conferences which are being held every year. I would say uh, very, very close, we are getting into the opportunity where we're gonna be checking on behavioral analysis and the crowds and uh, trying uh, uh, as well as in a, in a store so we will be able to identify the thief before he will take any action to do so. Uh, uh, and like I say, uh, amount of people which are right now uh, going with their career in AI and machine learning is getting increased like exponentially almost every day, which is great. Uh, and that's why, you know, we can, the more people involved, the, the greater products and startups and uh, can be developed. That's great. That's great. Alexei, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate your time today. Alexei with Radius Security, thanks for your help. I uh, really have enjoyed speaking with you today and uh, look forward to continuing to work with you in the future. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you.